Hi, I'm Monica Vitsanavich, and I created this book. What is a river? I drew the images and I wrote the text. I will read from it. We are on the banks of the river, my grandmother and I. I am picking flowers. Each flower has a meaning. Daisies represent love, shamrocks health, reeds resilience. That's what grandma says. I'm going to make a wreath. Grandma has a piece of fabric, some thread and a needle. She is embroidering a tablecloth. The river glimmers in the shade, reflecting trees and flowers. It has hidden depths beneath its surface. Just like people. River, who are you? Grandma, what is a river? A river is a thread, says Grandma. It embroiders our world with beautiful patterns. It connects people and places, past and present. It stitches stories together. Rivers make up only a tiny fraction of all the fresh water on Earth. But think of all the powers rivers have. They take us on breathtaking voyages of discovery, soothe with their coolness, bring us together, inspire contemplation, tickle in imagination, and sometimes even frighten us. A river is a journey. A bubbling spring, a gap in the glacier, a boggy marsh, a silent lake. A river can begin anywhere. A river travels to many places, prairies and cities, dense forests and lush meadows, steppes and tundra, mountains and valleys. It travels through heat and cold, it leaps from dizzying heights, cascading down as a waterfall, it slinks lazily through marshes. Suddenly it twists, then manders, it creeps underground, it carves canyons out of mountains. Rivers can join together and flow as one, connecting places and people. Can you imagine how many people the Nile, the world's longest river, visits on its 4,100 mile journey through Africa and over the Danube in Europe, flows through 10 countries and gets its water from nine more. Down from mountains and the bridges and finally to us, to you and me, Grandma. Everybody's home. Mammals, birds, fish, insects, reptiles, all kinds of creatures call rivers home. Rivers are some of the most diverse ecosystems on Earth. In fact, they house more species than the ocean. People, too, live near rivers and have since ancient times. The first civilizations emerged in the valleys of the Tigris and the Euphrates, Nile, Indus and the Yellow River, where the waters had enriched the land with nutrients and sculpted natural roads. Rivers create and nourish. They provide drinking water for humans and animals. They irrigate the fields where we grow food for ourselves and our animals, flowers our celebrations and cotton for our clothes. Rivers make life easier. They provide the water we use to wash our clothes. They produce electricity that powers homes, factories and mines. They create the sand and gravel we use to construct buildings. We use them to transport goods, whether in huge container ships or small boats. In recognition of this, many countries have been named after rivers. Belize, the Belize River, Bosnia, the Bosnia River, and so on. A river is refreshment. Rivers revive land. Just look at Botswana's inland Okavango Delta. Once a year, the Okavango River floods the plain and creates a wondrous wetland within the Kalahari Desert. Flowers blossom, animals return, all is full of life. Rivers also refresh us. They bring fog in the morning and birdsong in the evening. They cool our tired feet. 
with a keysless motion. They invite us to see things in you. For all these reasons, when a river changes course, the consequences can be dire. Have you heard the sad story of the Aral Sea? Since ancient times, it had been fed by the Amudaria and Sirdaria rivers. Then, about 60 years ago, people irresponsibly began to divert those rivers to irrigate fields, causing the sea to shrink. Today, the Aral is only a tenth of its former size. Where once there was water, now there are only dusty plains and rusty ships. A river is a name. The names of rivers come from different places. Some have names, but come from languages so old that they no longer exist. Languages that were spoken long before any of today's countries were first drawn on maps. Some rivers have names that describe the movement. Some rivers are named after colors. Some rivers have names that describe their size and power. The world's mightiest river is the Amazon. Around 20% of all fresh water on Earth flows through it. Every second, it discharges nearly the same amount of water into the sea as all North American and European rivers combined. Its current is so powerful that sailors out at sea can taste its fresh water more than 100 miles away from the coast. Where does the Amazon's name com come from? Legend tells of an expedition led by Francisco de Orellana during the ferocious Spanish colonization of the South America. While traveling up the river, de Orellana and his men encountered a band of female fighters. They reminded him of the Amazons, a tribe of warrior women whose exploits were described in ancient Greek myth. And so the river was named. And the story of its name has traveled far beyond its source, just like its waters. Some river names are so old that the origins are lost to time and we no longer know where they come from. But whether we know the origin, origin of the name or not, every river's name contains a story, perhaps of power, love, war or loss. A river is a meeting place. Since the beginning of time, rivers have brought us together through settlement, trade and ritual. Today, millions of pilgrims gather to wash away their sins and sorrows in the sacred rivers of India, just as they have for hundreds of years. The Hindu festival of Kumbh Mela, one of the largest peaceful gatherings in the world, takes place on their banks. Areas near rivers are among the world's most densely populated places. China's Pearl River Delta is the largest urban area in the world. A river is a mystery. Rivers are full of secrets. What awaits us behind the next bend? That light flickering in the distance. Is it a firefly? A campfire? Maybe even a mischievous sprite? What happens on the riverside at dusk? Who will we find there? Arabic's history. Rivers remind us of the Earth's past. They are home to species that originated long before the era of dinosaurs and still thrive today. Species called living fossils. And the currents, which carve canyons from rock, reveal older and older layers. Rivers also collect fragments of our lives. Sometimes people lose things in rivers or throw them in, on purpose. Some are carried along by the current. Occasionally, they resurface. In this way, the river brings us pieces of the past. Others sink slowly down, eventually setting in the mud. Bicycles, skis, mementos, even memories. People once believed that there was a magical underground river called Leith. If you drank from its water, you would lose your memories. But where would they go? Isn't it possible that as people lowered their heads to drink, the memories fell out and sank into the depths. Maybe they are still there on the river floor, along with the other lost and abandoned things. 
what we throw away or lose, rivers often hold and remember. A river is a smell, creates a zest of cold water rushing past, damp scent of mud during the low tide, I have a spice of algae covered rocks baking in the sun, sweet perfume of cherry blossom riding on the gentle downstream wind, irresistible aroma wafting from an open picnic basket by the river. So many spells, but none of them, as you probably know already, are pleasant. Imagine the blooming lotus fields of the Volga River, Delta in summer or the flowing markets of the Mekong River. Fresh fruits, fish, flowers, spices, everything for sale on the boats has a smell. Close your eyes and imagine the river. What does it smell to you? What does it make you think of? A river is death. What lies hidden at the bottom of a river Stones, plants, abandoned treasures. How many secrets would all the keys thrown into rivers unlock? What hides in the depths of the Congo, the world's deepest river? Over 700 of the fish. Sorry, <laughs> over 700 kinds of, the, of fish. The river's currents are so strong that different species evolve in different areas, separated by the water's turbulent flow. Crocodiles, tortoise, water snakes, and even mighty underwater waterfalls. Countless tears swell there, too, shed long ago from when the greedy foreign king ruled the river without mercy for its people. A river is energy. Rivers are powerful. Just think of the roaring waterfalls or how quickly rivers can rise and the, f and the force with which they can flood our s vast stretches of land. Once upon a time, Guayra Falls on South America's Parana River had more water volume than any other waterfall in the world. People could hear its roar from nearly 20 miles away. But then, in the same, in the same river, one of the world's largest hydropower plants, the Itaipu Dam, was built. Itaipu means the singing stone in Guarani, a language spoken by many people in the area. Some say that the roaring voice of the waterfall still sings in the noise of the dam's turbines. But what is the song of a machine compared to that of the waterfall? A river is a reflection. Rivers reflect the surroundings and they tell us about ourselves. So what do they tell us when they have overflowing with garbage and covered in oil spills? Throughout the ages, people have told stories about a miraculous river that could reverse aging and cure illnesses. Known as the fountain of youth, many have searched for it, such as the great warrior Alexander, the mysterious medieval King John. Was he an actually an actually real person? Spanish conquistadors? Perhaps such a fountain doesn't actually exist. But like the fountain of youth, the flowing water of all rivers is the magical water of life. A river is a connection. Rivers connect the past, present and future. From remote lands, they weave their way to our homes and continue on a distant horizon. They bring faraway places close and turn strangers into neighbors. Look up on a clear night and you will see a glittering ribbon of stars stretching across the sky. Some call it the Milky Way, some the path of birds, and others the Silver River. And like all rivers, it connects us all. For whoever is looking, from wherever they are, shares in its enchantment. A river is a flow. 
the ancient Greeks believed that the whole world was encircled by the great river Okeanos, which was the source of all what on earth. This is where the world, oh, this is where the word ocean comes from. While we now know this isn't the case, it is true that all the water in the world is part of a gigantic system that existed long before we were born and will continue to exist long after we are gone. Water is ever changing, flowing back and forth between oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, clouds, rain, and groundwater. It flows through every tree, fish, and insect. It flows for you and me. The sun is sinking in the sky. Grandma has gone cold. Time to go home, she says. But is the story of the river finished, Grandma? She looks at me and smiles. Painters, composers, sculptors, crafters, explorers, map makers, lawmakers, activists, poets, philosophers, pilgrims, conquerors, merchants, fishers, scientists. Many people throughout history have told stories about rivers. What is yours? Every story is important, and new ones are being added all the time. So, you see, the story of the river can never be finished. It is constantly being written. We are heading home. But now I know what my river is. A story without end. I finish my wreath and let the current carry it away.